Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. I'm back with a supplement to the basic uh, shooting gallery building video with the modifications that you all really want to see. Let me show you uh, quickly overhead what's happened here. I have enclosed the building space, which you would want to do on a actual server, of course, and probably put a roof on it too. Um, I'd strongly recommend having an external door here that you can use to uh, open for business or close it off. I've left a number of windows along here so that if there were people out here queued up to play, they could watch other people play or watch their friends play and or die. And on the other side of the house here, um, I've added a couple more rooms and some more electronics to extend what was already happening with the system. So uh, let's go through what has changed here. And then um, I also recorded a couple demos of these features working with my friend Key, who will uh, help show some of this off. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the examples of those features that have been added. And then I will come back and walk you through how they work. So let's take a look at those. All right, I've got uh, my friend Key here to help me demonstrate one of the anti-cheat mechanisms built in, and that is to prevent more than one player from being in the pillbox uh, attempting to play the game at once. There's no advantage to this because you can only get scoring for one target at a time, so having multiple people shoot them is generally not going to get you more points unless you're timing it really carefully. So to avoid having two or more people try to sneak in here and play the game, um, it's been set up with an HBHF sensor that is wired in such a way that if there's more than one person in this room and you start the game, it will blow the ever-living shit out of you. So there's two of us in here and I'm going to start the game. And that's exactly how that's supposed to work, so fuck you for cheating. Here we are in the pillbox to uh, demonstrate a run of the game and one of its uh, outcome features, we'll call it. It's the don't suck feature. Uh, Key, if you want to go ahead and start the game. And uh, just for our friends at home, I have... Uh, excluded authorized people from this HBHF, so that's why I'm not triggering the two-person cheater trap in here. And in the meantime, he is going to attempt to uh, shoot down targets. And at the moment, I can show you all he's playing. The two mechanics back here are a low threshold suck timer and a high threshold hooray timer. The low threshold uh, suck, I'm calling it the wrong thing, counter, not timer, counter, um, is measuring the score the same as the scoring counter out here. And if you do not reach the minimum threshold that this is set to, at the moment it's set to 10, then it sets off the you suck feature. And the you suck feature is tied into this door here so that if you score less than 10 points by the end of the game, as a reward for sucking, it will open the shotgun traps and blow the shit out of you. As the person who owns this game, presumably you would be back behind one of these doors and when it blows away the person who sucked, you could come out and collect their loot. At the moment, the game timer I have set to about 10 seconds longer than the actual game time. So the game ends, the you suck feature uh, blows away the person who did a terrible job. Uh, you loot all of their wonderful belongings and then the door opens 10 seconds later. And if you need more time to loot people and reset, you can set this timer longer or you could uh, add a manual switch back here to interrupt the door um, or interrupt the timer and just keep the door open, just to have a second power source for the door or whatever you'd like to do to make that work better. So that is what happens when someone does not meet the don't suck threshold, and that's adjustable through this counter right here. Um, set it to whatever value you like. 
Okay, and uh, here is another demonstration of one of the features of this game. Uh, I left in some windows uh, over here for observers to watch you play, but obviously the person in the pillbox does need to have the window open in order to shoot the targets that are opening. But of course, some cheeky bastard's gonna wanna just jump through the window and run up and knock down the targets by hand or shoot them at close range or whatever. So uh, I've installed a turret out here to ensure that people don't try to get out of the pillbox without some resistance. Um, it's in a place where it's relatively difficult to shoot from the window, but of course if you're attending this game, you shouldn't really have a problem keeping an eye on people who are screwing around and jumping through the window and just uh, kill them and don't let them come play your game anymore. Alright, so now we're going to uh, demonstrate what the high scoring hurrah threshold uh, counter does for you. Yeah, in this case, I have it set to 15. So Key's going to try playing a game and see if he can't score 15 before the end of the 10th round. And the display counters we're seeing out here show you your score and the current round. So the one on the left is the score and the one on the right is the round. And so you'll see it ticks up to round three as the round starts. And then as he shoots those down, he gets four and five. Again, one of the uh, limitations of the scoring mechanic is it will fail to score hits that are faster than one second. So even if all four, five doors opened and somehow you were a very fast sharpshooter, um, chances are you'll only be able to get three, possibly four points within that window of the three seconds of the doors being open. At the end of the 10th round, the red beacon light will also turn on. And see, uh, he has scored 10 points, so that means he will avoid death by the not suck mechanic here. So he's safe from the shotgun trap opening and blowing him away. And now we'll see if he can make it to 15. Looks like there were no doors on round eight. That's gonna make this harder. Round nine. He is one point away. Go up to the sky view here. There's 15 points and 16. And you will see that the hurrah counter I have tied to an igniter and the igniter is hooked up to some fireworks. You can have this be any reward system you want. In this case, I just hooked it up. Um, the threshold is set on this counter, it's presently 15. You might set it to 20 or 25 or something that's uh, particularly difficult to reach. And then you could tie it to, for example, a door that opens a loot room um, or to fireworks or some lights or um, an alarm or something else that just celebrates that they hit the high score or whatever your scoring threshold was. Again, this uh, whole exhibit here is predicated on you generally attending it to either give out loot or to take loot from dead people's bodies and to do repairs to the the targets during gameplay as well because that's another thing that will happen um, as people play the game normally you will see that the targets take damage and so you will have to repair them on occasion or they will actually break down and die so this is not particularly good uh, game or trap to set up for unattended use um, but you could use it for unattended use to a limited degree with some modifications so uh, thank you key good job all right so now having seen the demonstration of how the different uh, features here work uh, let's take a look at what's behind the scenes uh, obviously the the pillbox protection here that keeps uh, extra players out of here so you don't have more than one player in here uh, either trying to cheat or get an advantage is driven by the use of the HBHF sensor. Uh, this is a video I haven't done yet but I, I'm going to put on my to-do list. Um, if you've used an HBHF sensor before you know that it puts out the number of units of power uh, based on the number of people it sees. So right now it's putting out zero because I am excluded from this uh, because I have it set to exclude authorized people. So it's only not unauthorized people coming in here that would be counted. 
if you get one person in the room, it sends out one unit of power, which would come through here. It would make it to the blocker, the input of the blocker, and that would be it. No power would make it beyond there because you're only sending one unit. Um, that's the key to this functioning. If there are two or more people, it's gonna send two or more units of power. In this case, because I need to combine it with another logical circuit, two units of power coming down to the OR switch would only make it to the OR switch and not the door. So instead, I'm sending that one unit of power into an AND switch, and I'm putting, well, 64 is too much. You really only need one, two, three units coming into the other side here. But I'm using the AND switch as a power booster. Um, the one unit or more coming from the HBHF will make this true and it will send through the higher of the two values. So if there's only two coming in here or three coming in, but you've got four or more on this side, then it's gonna send the larger value through, which comes to the OR switch, which makes this true, which goes to the door and causes the door to open. So therefore two or more people result in the door opening, results in shotgun traps blowing away the people who are trying to cheat. Now, the blocker is triggered off of the game starting. So two or three or four people can walk in here and hang out and look around. But as soon as somebody hits the timer to start the game, that is what unblocks this blocker. And if there was more than one person in here, starting the game is what's going to kill everybody in the room. So you have a chance to not cheat and leave before you start the game. But if there's more than one person in the room when the game starts, then they're gonna get destroyed by the shotgun traps. Um, this back door here is your way as the trap or game owner to come in here and clean up the loot from all the bodies. The storefront that I left here is a safe way for you to pass uh, rewards to people if they win or whatever you want to call that for your purposes. Um, and so if you want to reward them with loot, you can uh, pass them loot here before they leave. Um, the timer on here right now is set to 100. That leaves you about six to eight seconds at the end of the game to come in and clean up bodies. Uh, you may want to up this. I've been typically leaving it around 110 or 115 seconds, so I have a good 20 plus seconds to come in and clean up loot and leave before the next player comes in, assuming there's somebody waiting. Um, I did mention that there are two ways for this to open. The other was the not suck part of the game, um, which you saw when Key scored less than 10 points and the shotguns opened. The way that works is the other half of this OR switch. So the HBHF can open the door or the not suck process can, uh, or you suck process or don't suck or whatever you wanna call it, comes to this side of the OR switch. The way that works is at the end of the round, when the beacon light turns on, you can see a cable coming over from the beacon light, sending a little bit of extra power so when we end, hit the end of the 10th round or the end of the last round, whatever you've got the number specified to, it's gonna turn on this timer. Timer is set for four seconds. Just You just need a few seconds to open the door and kill people. Um, so it's going to turn on the timer, which is gonna send just, there's always power coming in here, and it's gonna try and send that power to open the door but there's a blocker here. This is the mediator. If they have scored this many of units a uh, score or more, it will block that door from opening. So this is the not suck threshold. If you hit this number, that is what keeps the door from opening. Right now, it's set to 10. If you want your not suck score to be 15, you need to score 15 or higher or you get shotgunned, you just set this target value to 15. If you want it to be lower, like five, set it lower. Any number here should work. Um, this target here is the hurrah counter. <laughs> That's what set off the uh, fireworks when you hit 15 or more, because it's set to 15. 15 is not too hard to reach. You might want to set it for 20 or 25. And right now it's going off to an igniter to light fireworks. I can show you where I've got that set up. Uh, this is another reason this would have to be attended because every time these fireworks go off you'd have to come replace them manually and you'd have to repair that igniter so uh, a better idea for rewards might be um, 
Maybe instead of a shop front here, you have like a loot room and a door. And then you just use this reward counter. If it hits, if they hit this threshold, it opens the door and they can get the loot. Um, again, you'd have to go restock the loot between rounds or whatever. But uh, that's what this mechanism is for. So this one is the target at which um, you want to have people die or not die, I guess. If they get this score higher, they won't get killed by the shotgun traps. And this is another one that you can use for fireworks or maybe some flashing lights and an alarm or whatever you want to do. It just that you can use this to trigger anything you like if they hit this defined score. Um, you could also just do that manually, it doesn't matter. I just put that circuit in here so you could see it. I also put it in here so I could show you how I extended the criteria. So uh, the other thing that's happened here is that we only had one unit of power coming out to increment the score coming from the blocker. We had one unit of power coming from the RF to reset the score. And then we had the power supply going out there. Well, so what I've done here, because I didn't want to redo all the electronics back there, what I've done here is taken the increment counter and put it into this AND switch, and then we're boosting up the power by putting 10 into the other side. So there's 10 always coming in here, and as soon as an increment pulse comes through to increase the score, it actually sends 10 out instead of zero, because it would have lost that one. And so we don't have to redo any of the electronics. This is a good thing to use. Anytime you have a circuit that has not enough power for what you need it to do, but you don't have any more available, you can always use an AND switch with a power supply to just boost up the power. In this case, I'm boosting up the increment score signal, and I'm boosting up the uh, reset game signal, and I'm putting them through some splitters so that I have three outputs. One for the don't suck counter, one for the hurrah counter, and one that goes out front to the counter that the player can see. So now instead of one scoring counter, we have three all working off the same original logic circuit without having to go redo anything. If uh, it were simple, you could go back and just boost out the number of units of power coming out of those circuits. The scoring one is particularly difficult to do that with um, because you'd have to put more power into every single target. So just boosting it up at the end here makes a lot more sense. All right. So hopefully this all makes sense. You've got the HBHF that's blocked until the game starts. And when the game starts, if there's more than two players, it sends a signal through that gets boosted enough to open the door and kill cheaters. And at the end of the game, the end of game circuit comes over from that beacon light, starts off this timer. Timer puts power through to kill people if and only if it is not being blocked and it gets blocked if they meet the minimum score for the don't suck counter. And then I'll take you briefly out front because there's some stuff on the other side of the wall here now that wasn't there before. Uh, you saw the turret. Um, that's a little bit of a deterrent. If you really want to keep people from jumping through the window here, you might want to put a few turrets out here because <laughs> you could probably just outrun the one. Um, or maybe some more shotgun traps or other things out here. And then uh, I've got the start of game circuit. So the, the timer starts this string of blockers, which powers up the, uh, the broadcaster like it always has to start the game. Um, it also sends the power out over to this blocker to make a game not started circuit and it also comes here to make another game not started circuit um, or sorry game started circuit it cuts the power here as soon as the game starts this you can see says door controller it's that door so in other words when you start the game send a signal cut off the power to the door which makes the door close and of course since it's got a lock on it they're now locked in the game um, until they're done and if they are cheating they get blown up and if they suck they get blown up and they don't really have the option to leave so it sucks to be them the rest of these are just strings of power supplies that i used for the various components and used to power the turret um, used for the components back here so you could get that power from anywhere i'm just sized up what's on the ceiling or on the roof here uh, to do that so there you go
I think, because this is now going to be a very lengthy video, that covers the modifications that I've made to the shooting gallery uh, so that you can have some risk reward systems in here and use this as a fun game for you and your friends and strangers for whom you want to get loot. Uh, I hope this works out for you. I hope you come up with some other creative things to happen when people suck or don't suck. And uh, I'd love to hear more feedback from anybody who builds this, uh, how well it goes, how well people are shooting. Um, quick reminder, do not forget to repair your targets. <laughs> They do go down in health as they get shot. They will eventually die, so don't forget to uh, prepare your targets. And if you're going to use uh, fireworks, remember you got to reload those every round too. So if you're truly using this as a come and get rewarded thing, um, you have to reload your reward at the end of the game. You got to reload your fireworks at the end of the game, and uh, always take a look to uh, you know reload your ammo and your shotgun and your turret and repair your uh, targets. So. Uh, best as an attended game. That's it for now. Good luck, and don't suck. <laughs>